This last week on Final Fantasy, I did probably one of the dumbest things I've ever done regarding this game, and no, I'm not talking about becoming a cat girl VTuber, but instead going for the most wins ever completed in a week in Frontlines. The objective is simple. We are trying to set a world record for how many games a person can win in one calendar week within Frontlines. Little did I know, we would actually make a mistake at the very beginning of this project that we'll talk about at the end that potentially had the capacity of ruining the entire challenge. First, we need to understand how the record works and how we're going to be using this terminology. Currently in Frontlines, we use a freelancer system, which places you on a random grand company anytime you queue up for a match, and whether or not you're queued in as a serpent or you're queued in as a maelstrom, it doesn't matter other than for achievements, but that was not the case back then. Prior to 2017, the old system would actually have your company matter, and due to online ethics and just how things worked out, the maelstrom team almost always would win. And because of this, there are extremely volatile numbers of wins prior to 2017 favoring the Maelstrom. In addition, there were also eight-man parties at this time, meaning that groups of friends or teams had a higher agency to inf uh, influence the game's outcome. So, for that reason, after patch 5.18, the new record category would be the Freelancer System with a Light Party. With the help of some friends, we've combed through over the last seven or eight years of people's weekly standings and found that the current standing record for weekly freelancer is made by a European player named Godly Time. They were able to get a massive 164 wins within one week, and this would be our number to beat. Let's get started. Our game plan was to start our seven day journey by ensuring that day number one took place on the ice map called Shatter. Pre-made parties of four have the largest possibility of influencing the outcome of the game within this map. And if we make sure that the first day of our event starts on Shatter, we will get three days of Shatter, two days of Seal Rock and two days of Anzal. Since this is our highest win rate, that was our game plan. So, as we begin our first day, here's the calculation on screen of how many wins a day that I will need in order to match the current record. 164 wins divided by 7 days means that we have to get roughly 23 and a half wins a day. But, to keep it simple, I just shot for 25 and we'll go from there. With 25 wins a day being the objective, we started off, and for those that haven't played the ice map, it has a couple um, things that it's known for. The objective is to rotate around the map and kill these giant hunks of ice. The more damage you do to the ice, the more points your team is afforded. Um, simultaneously, any kills that your team gets towards other alliances or deaths you suffer will also affect your score. Uh, Premates really like this map, uh, mainly because there is a high density of players that aren't really paying attention to their surroundings, and you can score some really easy wombo combos and take advantage of that by getting your team a whole bunch of battle high, not to mention stopping the enemy team from killing the ice. Uh, as you get closer to prime time on uh, like 8, 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern, you're going to start running into pre-mades on every team, and it becomes a game of cat and mouse where you're trying to flank, bait people, 2v1 if a team gets too far ahead, and becomes a pretty fun game of chess. After a disgusting amount of shatter on day one, we were able to get a whopping 34 wins towards our goal of 164. A fantastic first day. Day two kicks off, and this time we are on Anzal, which is often seen as people's favorite map. Um, the average player in Frontlines usually only plays Frontlines on this day from what I've seen. And it is known for its frequent team fighting, particularly around the center of the map, as well as ease of rotating around the map and pinching other teams if they're already busy uh, 1v1ing the other alliance. 
Generally, a pre-made has slightly less influence on this map in particular due to the prevalence of spawn camping, the team that is in lead, as well as the punishing nature of what that spawn camp entails. So if a team gets very far ahead, uh, both other teams will kind of non-verbally agree, in most cases, to kind of box them in out of the map. And even if they're still getting kills, um, you know, when that team is losing its pugs left and right, that point decay is going to start to really add up and sometimes even outpace your pre-made's ability to score really successful kills. Um, not to mention, as that's happening, there are little objectives all around the map that are going to be captured by the two teams that are boxing you in. Um, I'll have a video in the future talking about some ways to kind of help balance front lines. We won't really talk about it here, but all in all, Anzal was kind of initially seen as this map that was going to be a little annoying to hit the win quota on due to the higher um, RNG associated with it. But overall, it was actually a pleasant surprise how well Anzal went. After finishing up for the day, we actually got 28 wins in Anzal, which is comfortably above our quota, and we can move on to day number three. The third and final map is called Seal Rock. It is similar to Anzal, except generally seen with more disdain amongst BVPers due to how large it is, how non-intuitive some of the battle lines are. Um, it's kind of... Sometimes you go minutes without even fighting anybody just due to how nuanced the map is. Not to mention the weird unwritten rules um, that make everybody camps the north spawn basically just due to how the geometry of the map works out it is exceedingly easy to invade the northern spawn and when people have nothing to do or don't really know what to rotate <laughs> that team just gets beat up a lot of the times and it's honestly just a flaw with map design but um, this can also happen to a smaller extent in south but in general the cave team definitely has an edge regarding positional awareness and being able to recover from a 2v1 type situation, which, like Anzal, does still happen quite a bit if a team gets too far ahead. Assuming the lobby is not completely griefing, everyone will try to 2v1 them until their points are brought back down to size. Uh, still very RNG, much like Anzal, so there's a noticeable dip in uh, win rate, but this is probably the first day we had where things started to not feel so good, and we knew that Seal Rock might be a problem for this challenge. We clock in at 24 wins for the day on Seal Rock, having tried a whole plethora of different compositions, strategies, as well as even games where we weren't even trying that hard, just kind of chill out and relax some due to how frustrating the matches were. But we still get our 24, not terrible, and we know that tomorrow is going to be the ice day yet again, and so we can hopefully have another really good day. I also wanted to give a massive shout out to all of the people who have been helping me out with this record as we had several different friends come out and sign up on the schedule and make sure that we always had someone to play with. Even if we were only playing for fun comps like for scholars, which <laughs> we'll, make, we'll talk about scholars someday, but we, we did a bunch of little for fun comps to make sure we were all still having a good time. But um, at the end of the video, we'll talk about... Uh, my thankfulness to everybody and we'll have like a little list of everyone that helped out but uh day two of ice went pretty well we were able to pick up 29 more wins we were kind of getting into a groove um you know our wombo combos were effective people were having a good time for the most part and i was starting to look pretty good we were starting to think you know this is actually going to happen we just got to keep it up keep the quota every day not overthink it too much and before we know it we'll be done and just have to slog through this grind. As we get closer to the end of me reporting these numbers, I cannot overstate how important this next day of Anzal was. We picked up 34 wins throughout the day. We were playing the standard meta Dark Knight Light Party for most of the matches, but we also had a really nice streak of Scholar games where pretty much no matter what, we just couldn't find, uh, we couldn't lose. I don't know what was going on. Uh, it was a little bit of luck. But as I mentioned at the start of the video, I had made a big mistake before I started this challenge. And we're going to talk about the next, uh, the next round of Seal Rock here soon. And I'll key you guys in on the looming threat that is 
quickly approaching without me realizing it while we're grinding these games. But for now, plus 34 on the Onsol. Oh, Seal Rock. We've returned to the map that has been the bane of our existence this challenge. And not just because we were having a tough time picking up wins. Seal Rock, uh, luckily, we were able to still complete a couple of achievements, actually. For those who didn't know, I have an achievement hunting series on this channel. And PvP wins is basically the secret final boss of being an achievement hunter in this game, just due to the raw hours you have to dump into it. But by this point, we were starting to get a little burnt, uh, especially some of the friends that had been helping me a lot along the way. And uh, a little rough around the edges, we still managed to get closer around our quota, but we had to play a really dumb amount of games today because we were just picking up L's left and right. I think we had like, there was a stretch where we played 10 games and only won one of them. And that is not normal for us. We were just having a really bad belt. We ended up bagging 25 Seal Rock wins, which is still above our quota, but trust me when I say we had to play way too many games to get those 25 wins. This was a tough day. Um, we even had to bleed a little bit into my sleep time to make sure we hit quota, but all in all, we got it done. Just one of the bad side effects of doing a run as stupid as this. Little did I know, the little extra work <laughs> was necessary. So here we are, day seven, our third time playing on the ice map. As you can probably notice on the side, our win count is already extraordinary regarding our record. And this last day would just be padding it out, making it so that when we pass the torch and when someone inevitably beats my record, we make it all that much more difficult. We played Shatter once again, our best map with the best win rate, even when we play a few less games. And we have a pretty solid day, all things considered. People's combos are on point. People are having a pretty good time. Everyone is happy that, you know, we've came this far and we're ready to just ride off into the sunset. Until the time finally comes where I unveil my biggest mistake of this entire challenge. We only ended up winning 20 games because, admittedly, we didn't go very hard knowing that we had already secured the world record and that we were ready to just call it quits had a good run, we were pretty safe, until I didn't realize the way in which we calculated these weekly standings was wrong. On the website, me being an idiot, I didn't read the small fine print that says all of the records on the standings are tracked from Sunday morning to Sunday morning. Well... Our first day was on Monday morning, which means that all of those 20 wins from the final Shatter Day don't even count. So we will take all 20 of those wins away. They never happened. So you might be wondering, oh, well, that wait a minute. What does that mean the first day was? Well, that would mean it was a Seal Rock Day on a Sunday. Me, knowing that I had the world record coming up, I opted to take the day off. I didn't play any Seal Rock on Sunday. Which means we accrued the amount of wins necessary for the record with a day of zero games. None at all. <laughs> so we didn't realize this until the very end and we had already played all six of these days as well as the seventh one that doesn't even count. So, uh... I was having not a real panic attack. I was just sad more than anything. But to my relief, even despite my massive blunder, we still bagged the record with only six days played. So what did that teach me? One, double check things like that before going for a record, because if there's a way to lose it, that would be it. But all in all, um, I'm very happy and relieved to say that despite the handicap, we were still able to bring it home. Uh, this is going to be a list of everybody that scheduled and had put some time out of their week or normal normality to make sure that I had parties running and had people to play with. Uh, if I did forget anybody who subbed in for a couple games, I do apologize. Just feel free to say something in the comments and I'll pin it. Um, but thank you again so much for everybody who helped with this. 
This is more of a spontaneous thing. I don't know why I did this. Um, I I don't really recommend someone tries to beat this because there was a few points where I really didn't want to play anymore. But because we did miss that day um, and we only played six days, I really do think that this could be beatable. Um, I think I could definitely beat this. I don't want to. I don't plan on it. So to whoever comes next, I pass you the torch. And uh, I really hope that there's some kind of, you know, either write-up or video on it. And I would love to see how you guys did it. Um, we do have some PvP reworks on the horizon. And I'm eager to see what happens with Frontlines in the future. But thank you guys so much for watching. Like I said, we do have an achievement hunting series over on the side if you're interested in that. And I also have some PvP videos in the works. Um, and I'm really eager to put those out, see what you guys think, and maybe we can get a little bit more discussion happening regarding uh, PvP in Final Fantasy XIV. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it, and I will see you guys on the next one. Maybe we'll do a frontline tier list soon, huh? All right, thank you guys so much. Take care, and bye-bye for now.